Hello and welcome back. In the previous videos, we looked at uh, preparation for each individual section of the GRE. Uh, check those out if you haven't already. Today, we're going to be looking at the GRE as a whole and talk about how you can approach the exam uh, as well as my own preparation timeline along with uh, what you can, what you should be prepared for on the day of the test. First, let's just get a few basic things out of the way. Giving the GRE costs $205 and you can take uh, the GRE up to 5 times in a 12 month period with a gap of 21 days. The GRE is really all about practice, about how you practice and about how much you practice. That said, it becomes really important to have sufficient time to prepare. There is absolutely no point in giving the GRE in a rush. If you're not sufficiently prepared for it, then it simply ends up being a waste of a really substantial amount of money. So the question is, what is a decent amount of time to prepare? Now obviously the answer to that differs from person to person, but assuming you're currently enrolled in a full-time college course or you're uh, doing a full-time job, then I, on average, I'd say that you should require about two to three months of solid preparation time. A question I get a lot is when is the best time to give the GRE? Uh, you can give uh, the GRE anytime between January and September. You will find that most people prefer giving the GRE in the July to September time period. That's because most people apply for a fall intake. So keep in mind that for if you are aiming for a fall intake, then you should be done with your GRE by September because most application deadlines for fall are uh, start in December so that leaves you enough time to actually get done with your applications. On the other hand, if you're aiming for the spring intake, you should uh, be done with your GRE by April or May since the deadlines for that are in August. When you start your preparation, you should always have a broad deadline in mind of when you want to give your exam, even if you don't actually have a solid fixed date yet. That basically ensures that you don't lose focus or discipline in the process of preparing. Many people take up coaching classes for the GRE and something that I get asked a lot is do I really need coaching classes to prepare, is it really necessary and can I do it on my own? Absolutely yes, you can prepare by yourself and actually score well doing that. I myself never went to any coaching classes and I still scored a 331. So I'd say it's definitely doable. However, where coaching classes help is in essentially forcing you into a routine to sit and study and making sure that you stick to that routine. So if you have trouble being in that discipline of sitting and studying regularly and like actually making time for study, uh, then you, you, you might find coaching classes definitely helpful. On the other hand, if you're confident that you can have that discipline and motivation to sit regularly and like sincerely study, then you can do it without the help of classes. There's also other reasons why people go for coaching classes, like the material they give is very extensive and they give a lot of word lists and practice problems and all of that. Again, personally, I, I, I don't think the practice problems are uh, really that useful but the word lists can be, so definitely save those. They also give a lot of practice tests, which you should definitely give at least a couple if you do go to coaching classes, although you shouldn't completely rely only on them. At the very least, it will get you used to the test environment and it will give you, an, give you an idea of what it's like to actually sit and give the test. Which brings me to the most crucial part of preparing, the practice tests. You can sit and do as many practice problems as you like at a stretch and it still won't really help you if you don't give practice tests. Never give the GRE without giving at least two practice tests before. Although ideally in the two months before your exam, you should give a practice test every week. There's many online resources that are available that you can use for practice tests. But uh, fair warning, not all of them are free and not all of them have workarounds that you can use to get them for free. But in the larger scheme of things, it's a relatively small investment that can make a world of a difference to your confidence and to your score. You really need to be careful about choosing your practice tests and uh, to choose the right kind of practice tests, you need to keep three factors in mind. The first is difficulty. How, dif how close is the difficulty level of the practice test to the actual ETS exam? The second is interface or user interface. This is basically what the test looks like, how you interact with it, how you use the different elements like the different buttons, the on-screen calculator. The practice tests need to replicate that environment, that interface 
uh, very closely for you to be able to get used to that interface. And the third is similar language. I said this before in my quant video, but too often the questions that uh, uh, appear in practice tests just don't sound like real GRE questions and you should avoid practice tests like those. Keeping these factors in mind, uh, here's the tests that I have found most useful in my experience. The ETS power prep practice tests. These are the practice tests that ETS themselves put out for our benefit. There are two tests in the power prep series and you can either get them free as a CD when you buy the official GRE guide or you can get them for free on the ETS website. These are the most important practice tests that you should definitely give in your prep time. Never give the GRE without giving these two tests first. Since these are put out by ETS themselves, this is the closest that you're ever going to get to the G actual GRE. The power prep tests should be the first and last practice test that you give. Start your weekly practice test routine with the first ETS test. This, uh, the score that you get in this test will be your baseline score. This is the score that will tell you where you currently stand and what things, uh, what are the things that you need to work on and practice more. This practice test, this baseline score should be used as a uh, tool to assess your strengths and weaknesses and should act as a guide for your preparation strategy. Then in the coming weeks, you should give practice tests from other sources. The second power prep uh, practice test should be the last practice test that you give before your actual exam. You can then compare this score with your baseline score from the first test and identify any last minute basics that you need to revise before the exam. So what are the other tests that you should give in between your power prep ones? In my experience and research, I found that the best uh, practice test source comes from Manhattan Prep. The Manhattan Prep online test series is a series of six online tests. The first of them is free and for the other five you have to pay $49. It's pretty similar to the real GRE, especially in terms of the difficulty level. Uh, also, six is, a, is just a good number of uh, practice tests to have. I think it's great value for money. It was pretty effective for me. I used it myself and it worked out pretty well. Kaplan and Princeton Review also have uh, decent uh, practice tests and they're really popular to use. Uh, they do come with some uh, caveats though. Uh, Kaplan is known to be a little tougher than the actual GRE, while Princeton Review is known to be much easier than the actual GRE. So if you're going for those, tread with caution and um, maybe use other sources as well. When you're giving your practice tests, be careful that you don't get too fixated on the scores that you uh, get in these tests. Your main objective in giving these practice tests should be to assess your strengths and weaknesses, especially in a test environment. You should use them to see where you can improve and do targeted practice for those areas. Also a good tip for vocabulary is uh, every time that you give a practice test, note down all of the words that you see that uh, you don't know the meaning of. And then once you're done with the test, uh, look up the meanings, write those down and maintain that list separately. This basically creates a new word list for you to revise later on. Let's now take a look at the timeline of my preparation for the GRE. So I applied for the fall 2018 intake, which is why I gave my GRE in September. So I consider the start of my timeline to be uh, in the January of 2017. At this time, I was in my third year of college and I was basically researching my postgraduate options. I was pretty clear on what field I wanted to get into. And uh, the January to March time period was when I was looking at different options as to how to go about that. I guess it's worth noting that it was at this time that uh, the people, some people that were already clear on uh, cl clear that they were going to give the GRE, had uh, started going for coaching classes, and some were actually already giving them uh, giving the ex actual exam itself. Around January was also when I started doing the Word Power Made Easy uh, book for vocabulary by uh, Norman Lewis. I've spoken about this in my verbal video and uh, I, I did say that it requires a little bit of time. So I just I was just doing this a chapter at a time, uh, not for too long or not too regularly at this point. A little later on from here, I did become more regular at it. So after all of this research by March, I had decided that I would give, uh, I would do a master's degree, I would pursue a master's degree in computer science and that uh, I would have to give the GRE for that. 
So the March to April time period I spent uh, researching the GRE pretty informally. This was mainly from just online resources and uh, my main uh, resource was of course the ETS website. I really didn't know much about what, uh, what exactly the GRE was except that it was an important standardized test that I needed to take. So I used this time to figure out and uh, understand what uh, the test structure was, uh, what kind of questions to expect, what, what the question types were, how to prepare, what books I could use, uh, what resources were available, uh, apart from uh, whatever ETS was giving for preparation. And by April, I had decided uh, roughly that I would be giving my GRE in September. April to May was actually the time when I had my college, uh, college exams uh, uh, for the end of semester, for the end of year actually and uh, I would be starting my preparation after those were done. And so the month of June was my studying time. This was uh, when I was referring almost exclusively to the official GRE guide published by ETS. Uh, I was looking uh, at the various sample pro problems that, they, that the book had, the sample essays that they had printed, and I was also pretty regularly doing the math review. I also used this time for uh, experimenting with different uh, external practice materials that didn't come from the ETS. This was just basically to understand uh, which one worked better for me, to just get a feel of all of the different ones and uh, figure out which one I would uh, stick with. And that brings us to the July to September time period. This was my intensive practice time. I was uh, doing one practice test every week. As I mentioned before, I started with the first power prep test. Then I did uh, the six Manhattan prep uh, online tests. And then I finished off with the second power prep test. I was also doing two hours of practice every day, out of which half an hour I set aside for writing a practice essay. And half an hour I set aside for uh, practicing vocabulary using the flashcards that I had uh, made. I did take a week and a half off for uh, my mid-semester exams that were towards the end of July, early August. But apart from all of the all of the other stuff that I was doing, I made sure that I was uh, practicing my vocabulary uh, whenever I had uh, free time available. I was using my phone, um, the mobile apps that I mentioned uh, in my verbal video for this. So basically whatever time I had like between lectures in the lunch break, that was the great thing about having apps on this uh, on the phone. Uh, I could really just practice anytime I wanted, anywhere I wanted. And finally on September 18th, 2017, I gave my GRE. So this is the timeline that I used for uh, my preparation. And this can perhaps act as a sort of rough idea as to what kind of timeline you should be following. You can of course change it around and increase or decrease time periods uh, according to your own requirements. Particularly the July to September time period, uh, you can either increase or decrease that. That is your most important, uh, uh, that, that is the most important section of this uh, timeline in any case. So this is a pretty decent timeline to follow if you're aiming for the fall intake. It worked, uh, it was pretty effective for me. Uh, and if you're aiming for the spring intake instead, all you need to do is just uh, shift up uh, this timeline so that it ends in April. I feel like the best tip that I can give you is something that my mom told me. Uh, if you have been putting in the effort for the past two months and you've sincerely been studying regularly, uh, then the, on the day before the exam, I think it's a great idea to just step away from your books and your word lists and vocabulary apps. Just stop studying. Sit back and relax, go outside, go hang out with your friends and just chill. I promise you it's the best way to just calm down before the exam and not let any pressure get to you. It'll free up your mind a little bit and the next day you'll get to the exam with a fresh mind uh, without getting exhausted. Make sure you thoroughly go through the ETS website to know more about the test and to know more about what to expect on the day of the test. To the test center, you need to bring a valid passport of yours and uh, along with a printout of uh, the confirmation email that you get when you book your slot. To be on the safe side, you should also have a supplemental ID proof with you. Uh, this can be either a government issued ID like your Aadhaar card or uh, driving license or it can be a valid student ID if you are a student. Try and find out about the test center in advance from someone who's already given their exam at the same place. So you know like how things like how warmly to dress, 
and just the general situation because uh, for instance uh, several test centers are very strict about not allowing jackets and sweaters inside the testing room but there are other places that do allow you to get those inside and that's really important if it's an air conditioned center they will give you a scratch paper and a pencil or rather they should uh, you're actually not allowed to take anything inside the testing room of your own apart from your passport and the clothes you have on you not even watches are allowed inside but just in case make sure you have a spare pencil in your bag uh, because uh, there have been some cases in some test centers in pune where i live uh, where uh, they fail to provide uh, the test takers with a pencil so just in case you find yourself in a situation like that you're going to be spending around 4 and a half hours at that test center so make sure you get enough food and water for uh, the 10 minute break that you have after the third section that break is optional but i strongly recommend that you take it because that's the only time that you can actually step out of the room so that's it for my tips on preparing for the gre i hope the series has been useful for you guys Uh, if you have any questions uh, about the GRE or anything else related to that, then uh, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on Twitter, and I will get back to you. As always, all the resources that I've mentioned in this video are linked in the description below. Remember to subscribe to this channel because there's going to be a lot more videos coming in the near future. Keep practicing, and all the best for your GRE. I'll see you next time.